Shivale National Park, located in western Uganda, sits on 296 square miles and it is one of the most biodiverse rainforests in the country and a home to 13 different primate species. For the last 25 years, a restoration project to help mitigate climate change and to empower nearby communities has been going on in the forest. The restoration project began in 1994 after encroachers had been chased off the forest land in 1992. By that time, much of what used to be a natural forest had disappeared and the number of animal species in the forest had become depleted due to continued encroachment on the forest land. However, the restoration exercise was quite a challenge for the officials of Uganda Wildlife Authority. The government wanted to justify why the people were evicted. One reason was to restore the integrity of the work of the park. And after when they saw that the park was not restoring, which was not regenerating by itself, they had to invite a face foundation, which had already started in 1990 in the whole land. So through IUCN, face was invited. Then they came and started carrying out baseline surveys from 1992. Then the active restoration started around 1995. Another key aspect of the restoration of Chibale forest was the need to also bring back some of the indigenous tree species that had nearly become extinct in the forest and to empower members of the local communities by involving them in the conservation process. Some of the short-term objectives was creation of employment to the local communities who were, after being evicted, some of them were, were settled in Chibale, Chibale district. Then those who remained, they also there was that need to create employment for those local communities. This part of Chivale National Park is known as Mainaro, and for years Uganda Wildlife Authority has endeavored to revitalize the forest, something officials say has finally paid off with the reemergence of certain species that were no longer visible in these parts. Uh, since this is only part of the park, it's really a general trend that the, the population is growing. But what I can uh, emphasize here is that this forest has been colonized now. The, the species that we used not to see there, we can now see them. I think that is what is important that this habitat has been colonized by the forest species. Besides promoting biodiversity, mitigating climate change and conservation, the Chibale Forest National Park is also reaping big from earning carbon credits. So far, 4,000 hectares of forest cover has been restored by the park officials, while 5,500 hectares of the forest has naturally regenerated itself, making it almost 10,000 hectares of forest restored. The trees, because through, I think, photosynthesis, they remove that carbon. Then after removing that carbon, which means the light will be free or the heat will be free to hit the ground, then bounce back, which means we shall be having a very clean environment. We shall have no global warming. We did our last campaign last year. When we talk about campaign, uh, it is an exercise where you go and uh, measure the carbon stocks that are in your trees. That's what I mean by carbon campaign. So we did our campaign last year and um, we ascend that we have a carbon stock of 200,000 tons. And so in a voluntary market you can sell that for 60 US dollars for a one ton or, or 4 euros for a ton, so depending on the best price you get. So if you sell all of it, now that's the kind of money you'll get. Members of the community are often seen monitoring the forest along with Uganda Wildlife Authority officials and this helps in the protection of wildlife. According to Uganda Wildlife Authority, forest conservation, restoration as well as cordoning of wildlife is done with the support of members of the local communities. The beehives that you're seeing in the background were given to members of the communities by the authority itself to help empower them. The locals play a significant role, especially when it comes to conservation. So here what we do, we either, we are supposed to make the boardwalks like those ones, so that elephants don't cross, or we give them these beehives. So what we did, we told them to apply, many communities applied as a project, as an income generating project. On one side, it is an income generating project, then on our side as UWA, we see that we are addressing that problem of animals crossing, especially elephants and buffaloes or hippos, but those ones which are not common, but mainly elephants. Who has also empowered women groups in the communities living near Chibale National Park by giving them goats as a startup into livestock farming. We work together. We have no problem with them. We have good relationship. They came and asked, asked us the problems we have. 
we told them that we have problems in in uh, problem of poverty. And when we talked about the problem of poverty, that's when they decided to give us goats. Gazette does a park in 1932. Chibal is one of the oldest game parks in Uganda, and although it was immensely degraded in the 1970s, there is still hope of restoring its old glory. For now, it still stands as one of the last remaining expanses to contain both lowland and montane forests, making it one of the most unique forests in the world. Suhel Mugabe, NTV Green.